Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 177. Tesla is gearing up for another record quarter, and now a standard organization wants Tesla's North American charging standard to become the standard as well. And Volkswagen is in a bit of a trouble, with slower than expected EV sales, and Audi's boss gets sacked. And Elon Musk is out saying that full self-driving version 12 will not be beta. And old legacy automakers are struggling with the new technology. And GM's Seve Silverado will have a starting price twice as high as promised. And Tesla has started doing some ads. And Tesla's Model Y wins yet another award. And Tesla's Project Highland gets a better battery. And the Cybertruck has come to Europe. And Lordstown Motors is giving up and filing for bankruptcy. All of this and much, much more on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. <laughs> Tesla is gearing up for another record quarter, but we should have all the numbers later today. In China, we are seeing record sales, and Q2 is shaping up to become a new all-time high quarterly record. And we do see Tesla's Model Y estimated delivery time in China have changed from one to five weeks to two to six weeks. So it seems like the demand is growing steadily. And we do see with the insurance numbers, that is of course not 100% accurate, but a pretty good guideline, that Tesla with last week's numbers was already over Tesla's previous record of 138,000. And then we can add all of the numbers we get this week on top of that. So we should get nicely above 150,000 units sold in Q2 in China domestically. So a pretty good beat of their standing record. Even with all the competition and shaky waters there is in China right now. I think this is a very impressive number from Tesla. But it's not just in China that Tesla is about to break records. I showed a couple of weeks back how many ships with thousands of Teslas that had arrived in Australia. Well, they seem to be all delivered now, as Tesla appears to have had the biggest quarterly sales in Australia so far, after periods with high inventory level for buyers to take immediate deliveries on. It now appears that the number one EV brand, Tesla, has cleared almost all its inventory. So we should see a very big new record in Australia as well. And in Europe, Tesla continues to be the old record in many countries. And here in Denmark, I can't wait to see the numbers, as my brother-in-law have just picked up his brand new Model Y performance at Tesla's new delivery center in Vamdrup. And it was packed with people, and the guys down there said that they were going to deliver 200 vehicles on that single day, the 30th of June. So Tesla is definitely doing a little bit of end of the quarter push here in my country. But we have now ended Q2, and sometime during this day, today, Sunday, we should get Tesla's delivery numbers. But as of making this new show, I don't have the numbers yet, so let me give you my best guess on what the numbers might be. I have my own little model where I only focus on the max production capacity of the factories and then I put in lockdown and so on and then I take 6% of my max production to get to my actually estimated production and then I take another 5% to get my delivery numbers as that is what we have seen over the last couple of quarters deliveries being just about 5% under their production so as always I end up being quite optimistic compared to Wall Street they are around 455 5,000 in deliveries, but I am about 483,000 in deliveries. And production is just above 500,000, maybe 509,000 units. In Q1, I was about 2% off as I had Tesla deliveries around 433,000, but it ended up being 423,000. So let's see if I can get any closer this time, because this time around I am much further away from Wall Street, so I might be wrong on this one, but I have to go with what I think is correct and what my little model tells me. But we should know later today. 
And do you like to disconnect from your busy day with some cool games? And do you have an insatiable appetite for epic battles, strategic gameplay and an excess of champions to choose from? If that's a yes, hold on tight because this video is sponsored by none other than Riot Shadow Legends. Riot's boost a jaw-dropping selection of over 700 champions, all uniquely powered up and with 15 different factions. Riot got 12 formidable dungeons waiting to test your might, but you can also try the classic person-to-person -person battle or tag team or the all-new live arena. The game never goes stale. Riot frequently rolls out fresh content, new champions, new modes, you name it. The excitement never ends. Whether on the go or at home, Riot's with you. Play seamlessly on mobile and switch to the desktop computer using Plerium Play. Your progress follows you. And you have millions of artifacts, combos, team compositions and strategies. Your squad can be as unique as you. Last but not least, join the booming community of over 400 million players across 190 countries and be part of this epic saga. If you haven't been watching Riot Call of the Arbiter on YouTube, the Limit series is well and truly underway, so be sure to check that one out as well. There is also a bunch of brand new contents in Riot Shadow Legends related to the Call of the Arbiter, including a free legendary champion, the mighty Orc Warlord Artak. All you have to do to get him is log into Riot for 7 days between now and July the 24th and that's it. So, ready to dive into the world of Riot? Well, check out the link in the description or use my QR code to get insane bonuses for new players with epic champions. We are talking about an epic champion, Drake and other useful things as energy refills and epic skills. So check out my link down below so you don't miss out and join the action today. Tesla's North American charging standard keeps getting more and more companies to join. And now a standard organization wanted to become the standard as well. This week we got Volvo joining and only a couple of days after Polestar of course also joined. But I did ask last week who will be the first German and we might have got our answer this week as well as Volkswagen's confirmed that it is in talk with Tesla to adopt the North American charging standard connectors for its electric vehicles in North America. The news comes after Electrify America, which was founded by Volkswagen because of the Dieselgate scandal, announced that they will be adopting the North American charging standard. But now SAE International, a standards organization, aims to create an industry standard configuration based on Tesla's charging connections within six months. CAE International is in talk with Tesla, Ford, GM and other automakers as well as the federal government about standardizing Tesla's technology known as the North American Charging Standard or NACS as Tesla has called it without it being a standard of course. The collaboration between industry and government reflects a shared sense of urgency and purpose according to Frank Menchaca, president of Sustainable Mobility Solutions at SAI International. He emphasized that the standardization process involved multiple companies working together to develop a standard for the charging plug. The White House has indicated that the charging stations using the Tesla standard plug will be eligible for the federal subsidies if they also include the combined charging system, the CCS, which is the US charging standard connection. But Tesla is ready for this as they have created the magic dog for exactly that reason. But Texas and Washington have announced that they will require NACS alongside the CCS as part of the federal program. However, it is still uncertain if the federal government will mandate this. So everyone is joining the NACS, Tesla's North American charging standard. So let's see how long Lucid will stand as the only one that does not want to be part of the party. And we do have a lot of trouble within the Volkswagen Group this week, with slower than expected EV sales and Audi's boss gets sacked. 
Volkswagen's Emden plant in Germany is facing a production slowdown and workforce reduction, especially in its electric vehicle sector. Interestingly, this downtown seems to be unique to Volkswagen as the global EV market continues to thrive with competitors like Tesla experience strong sales. I personally think it's because the Volkswagen's ID family is a little boring. In many countries here in Europe, you can get the Tesla Model 3 for almost the same price as the ID3 and the Model Y for the same price as an ID4. So I know Volkswagen don't want to lower their prices, but if they want to sell some more EVs, I think they kind of have to. As I said almost three years ago, when I tested the ID3 for the first time, it's a nice little EV, but too expensive for what you get. And that is still the case today. I don't think the perception from the dealers has changed either, as we talked about a couple of years back as well. They don't want to sell EVs. So for Volkswagen to regain momentum, it must adapt to market demand through research, innovation, strategic realignment, and make sure that the EVs are correctly priced, especially since the EV market as a whole is showing no signs of a slowdown. And Audi has also sacked its CEO Marcus Deutschmann amid falling Chinese sales and slow EV product rollout. Deutschmann was the one that said Audi would catch up with Tesla with 7 mile boots back in 2020. But Audi sold 34,600 EVs in total globally in Q1. So about what Tesla does in a week. So not even close to catch up or even something I would call competition. So it ended up being Tesla that actually caught up to Audi as Tesla sold more cars than Audi in Q1 this year, ICE or EVs. And now Deutschmann got the boot. He was the last high-level appointment from former Volkswagen Group's CEO Herbert Dies. Deutschmann will be replaced on the 1st of September with current Volkswagen Group's strategy boss Gernot Dullner. The move was long considered to be a simple matter of time as Deutschmann followed Dies to Volkswagen Group from the BMW was considered a dead man walking, with little internal political support once Dies had been removed. And let's get our monthly update about Tesla's Giga factories. That means handing it over to Brian from My Tesla Weekend. Take it away, Brian. Hey, Lars. In Shanghai, there have been heavy flight restrictions, which means we can't see anything that's actually going on. In Berlin, the Stamping Cathedral at the north has windows. Some wall work going on there. And at the south, the bus uh, area has landscaping. It's got trees. The whole parking lot has landscaping. And the canopies over the parking area for the employees has resumed. The overpass bridge has begun. There are trees throughout the parking lot and the uh, eastbound lanes have been paved. All the rail arms are up, the arms over the transit line, and the canopy holders are up, and the platform for the commuters is in. There's a second loading lot just next to it between the Motor Works building and the transit line that is very busy. The northeast drainage and pad has been completed. I think this is where the new batch plant is going in because they've also put up all these concrete blocks around it. It looks like somewhere you would store sand and gravel to make concrete. In Texas, the concrete work at the northeast, there's been uh, some rework there. Looks like they're fixing drainage or whatnot and the apron is being widened uh, for better access to the building. At the south, the grading is complete. The drainage under the new part of the area and around it appears complete. The geopeering in the south and rebar cages and new footings have been poured. This area is well underway. On the west side of the building, we can see a lot more stain has been applied to the concrete and it's now wrapping around to the north. There's been widening of the grading just to the east of the cathode and even footings for an additional building there. The cathode building has windows, finally, and uh, there's rebar in the alley. At the switchyard, it's looking good. We've got gravel in, we've got uh, concrete trays for the mega packs. The mega pack itself area, it's got vertical steel, it's got the high tension lines in and done. 
On the far west side, on the other side of the highway, we see a road appearing. There's a double directional separated divided road there that's going in. Um, that's been delayed a bit by inclement weather. The property is now cleared all the way up to the property line. Neighbors aren't super happy. Apparently the construction lights have been in their eyes, but they've taken down most of those lights to make them happier. Remember when we thought this property was too big? That feels like a quaint memory. That was a long time ago. And the last thing is to the far northwest of the property, the farm to market road uh, area that expands out to the farm to market road along Tesla Road, um, they're expanding that, they're increasing the traffic capacity. Still nothing going on in Mexico, but we'll keep you posted. Back to you, Lars. Thank you so much for that update, Brian. See you next month. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. To just add to Brian's great reporting there on Tesla's Giga Factory, just after he had sent me the footage, we saw, thanks to Joe Tackmeyer, that Tesla got its first six of the 64 mega packs in place at Giga Texas Factory. So that is very cool and something we can keep an eye on going forward in Brian's updates. We also got to see what looked like the Cybertruck frame at the Giga Texas Factory as well. Again, thanks to Joe. So it looks like things are progressing at the Texas Texas factory and the 2023 US initial quality study by JD Power reveals that new vehicles quality is at its worst in over three decades with an average of 192 problems per 100 vehicles. The rapid incorporation of technology in vehicles is a significant contributor to these issues. Though intended to enhance user experience, technological advancements, especially in electric vehicles, are proven problematic. Dodge, Ram and Alfa Romeo emerged as top performers, while Ford and Toyota experienced notable declines. The study calls for automakers to balance innovation with reliability and ease of use to improve customers' satisfaction. Yes, it is not easy with all this new tech when you are not a technology company like Tesla is. And it appears that Tesla is now looking to retire the beta design of the full self-driving suite. As per a recent comment by Elon Musk, when asked about full self-driving beta version 12 would come later this year, Elon wrote version 12 won't be beta. So that is very exciting. Of course, we don't know when that version 12 will come, but getting out of beta would be a big thing. It would mean that suddenly all Tesla owners who have bought the full self-driving software will be able to get the capabilities of today's beta program. That would be awesome. But we don't know when or if this is going to be the exact case, but I am very excited about it anyway. And if we look at the progress we have seen from the first beta visualization to what we have today, we can see just how much better it have got as well as their driving capabilities. And Tesla is apparently no longer interested in building a gigafactory in Spain, as the company has reportedly pulled out of the negotiation with the region government of Valencia. After new of their negotiation leaked to the media. <laughs> Burn. And the Chevy Silverado EV is no longer going to be offered at the $40,000 it announced at the reveal. Now they are offering the base model for $80,000 to commercial customers only. So twice as much as promised. Of course, no one expected them to do one for $40,000, but twice as much is quite a lot. I hope Tesla will not have a starting price of $80,000 for the Cybertruck, but uh, time will tell. And speaking of the Cybertruck, if you have one on reservation, RapMate just launched Interactive Tesla Cybertruck Wrap Configurator. So here you can see how your Cybertruck will look with different wraps. And China is set to double its capacity of solar and wind and produce 1,200 gigawatts of energy by 2025, reaching its 2030 goal five years ahead of time, according to the report by Global Energy Monitor, a San Francisco-based NGO that tracks operation utility scale, wind and solar farm, as well as future products in the country. Nice. 
and Tesla's re-RAM refreshed Tesla Model Y built in China will be using CATL's new M3P lithium-ion phosphate battery according to 36KR. With the base model battery pack capacity upgraded from 60 kilowatt hours to 66 kilowatt hours. So a better battery for the refreshed Model 3 Highland. It is turning out to be quite the refresh. Very exciting. And the Model Y has won yet another award. The Auto Vista Group Residual Value Award in the highly contested compact and large BEV SUV category. As they wrote, the outstanding sales performance and production desirability also continues well into the usable life of each vehicle, giving a remarkable resale value. Model Y was also awarded the highest overall score among all cars tested by Europe NCAP from 2020 to 2022. Yes, you won't find a much better and safer car than this. And Tesla also showed off the Model Y's great off-road capabilities in a new video this week. Just another great feature that makes the Model Y one of the best all-around vehicles on the planet. What we wanted to try to do when we made the Model Y was sort of take that notion and just blow it up. Our cars have always had great range and great dynamics. In the Model Y, we actually added what we call off-road mode which is a little bit of that brake torque vectoring to like on steroids. Maybe you're doing a little bit of river rocking and, and one wheel gets off the ground. You clamp that down and the other three put torque forward so you still keep moving. And that's something that gives the Model Y a capability that you might not otherwise get in a pretty sporty crossover SUV. At Tesla, we've always tried to constantly improve our products. Then to integrate all the functionality that you have in a typical crossover is something that's super important. So the cargo space in the rear, the additional cargo space in the front, fold flat seats that give you this wide open area if you need to do it, the towing that we have on the back end, all of that combined and then saying, you know what, it's still going to be a Tesla when you drive it. People that like to be dynamic, they're going to love it. People that want to sit up high and see the road, they're going to love it. People that have a family and need the storage space, they're going to love it. Every car we build, every new product we make, I want to take it a step further. I want to make people's understanding of what an EV can be and what a product is, make it a part of your life, a part of your experience. Ultimately, it, it results in a product people love, and that's when you know you've hit the right point of vehicle engineering. And Tesla will be shutting down Giga Texas next month for about five days to perform some upgrades to the Model Y production line. And at the same time, the company will be shifting some of its workers who were previously helping out to build the Model Y to support the start of the Cybertruck production. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Getting ready for some real production for the beast over them all. And it comes as no surprise, but Lost Town Motors filed for bankruptcy this week. As Thomas Hires, a chairman of the hedge fund Greenhill Capital, said, the bankruptcy of Lost Town signals that the days of successful EV startups are in the rearview mirror. Moving forward, it will be Tesla and the traditional incumbents that will duke it out for market share. Yes, it's not easy making an EV startup, and the jury is still out on many like Rivian, Lucid, and Neo and Xpeng. Even though they got some production going, they are still far from safe as no one of them are still earning money. And the first Cybertruck has arrived in Belgium for the European testing, hopefully. So that's very exciting. And the Cybertruck for the European market is still quite a little question mark whether it can be able to come over here in its current form or they have to change it. But nice to see it is here for some testing. And Mary Barra said after partnering up with Tesla that companies should partner more. Was there like a moment where you're like, oh, okay, we're doing this. We're, it might be the right decision, but it's, it's hard. You know, I would say I think one of the things uh, our industry could do is partner more. Mm -hmm. You know, there's you know we have we've done partnership deals with Ford in the past on transmissions. Uh, we have a you know partner on many things right now with Honda. I think our industry could be even more efficient. And we saw this as an opportunity for General right. Motors. We were able to save four hundred million dollars. Did you? How, how does, can you take us behind the scenes? Does Elon Musk call you up on the phone and say, "Hey, hey, Mary, you want to do we, this"? We actually text each other. That and you have so, a texting relationship. Yeah, not we, we not text. signal. It's text straight. <laughs> I mean, it, we've we've met before on a handful of occasions, and we and we text each other. So no, no DMing I, on, so on Twitter I, now. So I texted him. And we see Tesla has started to do some ads on Google. So let's see if Tesla's sales skyrocket after they have made this advertisement. 
It should, according to some institutional investors, right? But I don't think so. And you have probably seen all the fuss about Ross and Dan O'Clown doing their full self-driving beta test. And now they have also been on CNBC talking about it. And Dan O'Clown just showed off how completely off the mark he is. And we all know he's only doing all of this as he has a competing software company that will die as soon as Tesla has solved it. As Dan said in the interview, this is the worst piece of software I have ever seen in a safety critical product. <laughs> this is the worst comment I have ever seen about Tesla's full self-driving software. As I don't really care too much about what this clown says, but to say this when organizations like Europe NCAP or Australian NCAP or NHTSA have Tesla's safety assist features being the highest scoring system in the world really just show people how untrustworthy Dan O'Clown is and is just straight up lying as Tesla software is already today saving lives every single day. A fact that Dan, funny enough, completely ignores. What a clown show. And if you didn't see my two videos I posted this week, you should definitely check them out. One about the implication of Tesla's Dodo computer and the other one about the new grid that is emerging and why our grid will be able to handle all the electric vehicles. But before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to all my Patreons, members and executive producers of this show. Yes, thank you so much. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this new show. Thank you. And a big and special thanks to Supporter of the Week. And this week's winner is Malcolm Wallop. He has been a best in Tesla superhero for 19 months. Thank you so much for all your support. Please contact me on this email down below so I can send you your Supporter of the Week winner t-shirt. Thank you. And let's end off with a bit of fun. Someone asked Midjourney, the AI program, to create a female warrior from each country. And here is a little snippet of the list. Greece, Ireland, New Zealand, Korea, Ecuador, Australia, Japan, Greenland, and of course, the United States. <laughs> that, that is funny. <laughs> nice to see that the AI got a sense of humor. <laughs> That is all we have time for in this news episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help this video out a lot and cost you nothing. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell as well, so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. And don't forget, if you want to become an executive producer and get news articles every day, Monday to Friday, the video series Becoming News, access to all my research, charts and spreadsheets, and become a part of my little exclusive club of executive producers, head over to bestintesla.com and join with the members button. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1, become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. And also as simple as hitting the super like button. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't mess out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>